Now even though this video was geared towards cleaning the 3-gallon Tetra Half Moon Aquarium, the steps to cleaning this tank would be the same as any other tank, big or small. Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I clean my Tetra 3-gallon Half Moon Aquarium. And if you don't know, that is that aquarium right here. So I'm gonna be showing a step-by-step -step of everything that I do to clean it, and starting from getting everything out, the actual cleaning up process, and then putting the tank back together. So if you're interested in seeing how this goes, just keep watching. So the very first thing I do before I clean my tanks is I lay down a big bath towel right in front of my tanks, and this is good in case I spill anything and it stops the floor from getting all wet. And then the next thing I do is unplug the light and the heater from my tank. The next thing I do is grab a hand towel and put it right in front of my tank. And this is to catch any water that spills when I'm taking water out or putting water in. And also I put another one just on the table there where I put um, some of my supplies when they're wet. Then I go into my basket that has all of my cleaning supplies. And this includes my gravel siphon or the water siphon. I also have my water conditioner, a few cups that I use to scoop out water and put my betta in. And then I also have a net that I will use if I have to, and I also have a pail to collect all the water that I take out of my tank, as well as another cup. The next thing I do is take the lid off my tank, and I just kind of shake all of the water that's collected on top from evaporation. I also triple check that my heater is unplugged. Depending on the kind of heater, if the heater is on when it's not touching water, this will break the heater. So I like to make sure mine's unplugged just to be safe. Next thing I try to do is get my betta out of the aquarium. Now if your betta is as stubborn as Journey is, you may have trouble getting her out with a cup, so you may have to resort to the net, which after fighting with her for about two minutes, I did have to resort to the net. Once I have her in the cup, I put the lid on to make sure she doesn't jump out, and then I put her on the table on top of the hand towel I laid down. Next you want to take your gravel siphon and get it ready, and then you're going to want to put the thick end into the tank and the thinner end into the bucket. I usually have the bucket, which is the black one I showed you earlier, placed right underneath the tank in front of the stand. I do like to remove a few of the larger ornaments first because I find they do get in the way and the gravel siphon kind of hits them around, so I find them easier just to remove them. As long as you don't have them out of your tank for too long, it won't kill off the good bacteria that is on them. Next, you're going to want to get the suction going. There's two ways you can do this, which involves kind of flipping it upside down, and it's kind of complicated, and I struggled with it due to the length of the tank. So in order to get the suction going for me, I use the old-fashioned way, and I just kind of suck it up with my mouth. And then once the water gets close enough to my mouth, I dump it into the bucket and it works perfectly fine. They say with the tank around three gallons to do around a 75% water change, so that is what I'm doing here. So I took about three quarters of the water out. I paid the most attention to the area where I feed her and also the area where she hangs out because that's where you'll find the most uneaten food and fish waste. Then I just carry the bucket of dirty water over to my bathtub and then I dump it down the drain. This is a good way to check um, your fish's stool to see if it's healthy because you'll be able to see it as it goes down the drain. Next, I go back into my tank and I re-add the ornaments that I took out earlier. I'm using the same ornaments as last time, but this would be a good time to put in new ornaments if you were wanting to change it up. There is enough beneficial bacteria on your filter, heater, and in the substrate that if you change up a couple ornaments and take out the old ones, that you won't have any problems and won't have to recycle your tank. For a good example, I used to have a pineapple hut inside of her tank, but the paint started peeling and so I had to throw it out. Um, so I switched up the ornaments and added the scuba diver and that orange spiky plant that you see. So even though there was beneficial bacteria on that old ornament and not on the new ones I added, I didn't have to recycle my tank because there was enough on everything else. One of the last steps is to add your water back into your aquarium. I'm using this thermometer here to make sure the temperature is good. I have kind of memorized where I need to put the tap in order to have the water the right temperature, but it's always good to double check. Now the next and very important step is to add your water conditioner to the water. The water conditioner takes out all the heavy metals and chlorine that is in your tap water. Depending on the type of water conditioner you have, it might also help neutralize ammonia, which is very toxic to your fish. All water conditioners have a different strength, so to make sure you're using the correct dose, check the label on the back of your water conditioner. You don't really need to panic if you put in a little bit too much. Adding a little bit too much water conditioner is still better than not adding enough. When you've added all that you need to add, put the cap back on your water conditioner and then take a spoon and stir in the water conditioner into the water. You basically just want to make sure that it mixes in with all of the water. When you're done mixing, you're ready to add it to your aquarium. I usually just check the temperature one more time, but it's usually still good. Now if you're like me and you don't have very much arm muscle, this bucket may be very heavy, so if you don't have someone to help you lift it, you could also take a cup and scoop it out in small portions. 
Try to pour it in slowly or on top of an ornament or plant so that the water doesn't all come crashing down onto the substrate, for this can sometimes knock the ornaments over. I also stick the thermometer back onto the wall of the tank. Now the next important step, even more important than the water conditioner, is adding your fish back into your tank. Your betta will likely be very active at this point, swimming around and investigating his or her new tank. Now that your tank is clean, you're going to want to put the lid back on. Now although my bettas have never tried to jump, there's always a first for everything, and unfortunately your fish's adventurous jump will have fatal consequences, so that is why it's important to have a lid. If you have snails in your tank, it's also important to have a lid because they might try to crawl out. And with that, your tank is clean! The last thing you're going to want to do is just quickly plug in your heater and light that you unplugged at the beginning. I don't even really think unplugging the light is really a necessity, I just prefer to do it, but unplugging the heater, like I said at the beginning, is very important, but you're going to want to make sure that you remember to plug it back in so that it can heat your water up. So this was a requested video. If you have any video requests for me, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get them done as soon as I can. Now even though this video was geared towards cleaning the 3 gallon Tetra Half Moon Aquarium, the steps to cleaning this tank would be the same as any other tank, big or small. So you can still use this video as a guideline to cleaning your tank, no matter which kind you have. So I hope you guys found this video helpful or at least a little bit enjoyable. Let me know if you clean your tank any differently down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Sophie, don't drink that. No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that water has chlorine in it!